It's the 10 day movie challenge. Mike and I nominate each other, but we're gonna do it in one night. And we're doing it right here on The Mythwits. The show dedicated to all things geek pop culture, drenched in absurdity and coated with sarcasm every week. We bring on an industry guest or just talk to each other like morons. Every week we bring, oh, I already said that. See, morons. To talk about the ever-expanding Gigaverse and to play a game with us. You know what, Mike? I didn't have time to do a game. No game. We're going to just talk movies. Uh, we do our damnedest to be funny, but there are no guarantees. I'm your host, Peter Bryan, and always like an appendage, my co-host, Michael Kafis. Are we on yet? Did, did yeah. you push play? We got it. We're live. We're live. We're live. So yeah, we are live. So um, yeah, so we're, we're gonna do we're gonna do the ten day movie challenge. I was challenged by Jay Libby, but I don't like doing the chain things on the face of books. I just don't like it. Um, I don't like that. So so we just you know we didn't have a guest, and, and I apologize, folks. I know we haven't had guests. I've been super mega awesome busy, and so has Mike. He hasn't been able to jump in because he has been super busy too. Because Mike is in the middle of a big move. Um, Moving. So so yeah, um, and, and hey, I've been, I had a guest. I brought a guest on last time. I'm just saying. You did, you did, you did. But I I've been um, getting ready for, or getting game school, you know, up and running and getting the TSR podcast. I rebuilt the whole website. I just been super friggin' busy, and I've been doing this AetherCon thing too. If you haven't seen any of the AetherCon uh, interviews I've been doing, they're a lot like this show. It's like extra interviews with industry guests, um, and I've had to do a lot of the um, the guest wrangling for that. Uh, Mike helped out on one of the interviews. I've had so many other people helping out on interviews and stuff. Uh, but I have to do all the video editing and get them back up. So I don't know. Hey, just really hey, slammed. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah. Save the excuses for somebody who cares. We got work to do here. Okay? <laughs> all right. All right. Anyway, <laughs> on with the show, eh? Uh, no, but we'll have some guests coming up soon. I, I, I was going through the guest docket. I'm going to invite some people. Um, we got the movie draft in two weeks, brother. That's right. That's right. Uh, comfortably, comfortably nestled in third place place as we are i believe right isn't that yeah, our station? i'm really comfortable I'm, I'm curled up into third place yeah. Yeah. i'm around like a little third place blanket little... yeah i'm sleeping like a puppy on a dog yeah. bed right there down in third place yeah. Yeah. And we, evidently uh somebody's waiting for their uh their championship belt which i don't think that they understand just what hey you know. wait here championship belt will be something like here look i'm gonna, I'm gonna give them their championship belt it's gonna be something like this that's uh, it was That's better than me. I was going to pull out a, my, my uh, J.C. Penny belt. Oh, okay. Hey, don't let me forget. I got something for you. Uh, I got to bring down with me on Saturday. I got a T-shirt for you. That's right. Yeah. We got. Uh, we're we're having dinner Friday and Friday night, right? Uh, I think I think we're gonna. Oh. Okay. Let's skip. Let's skip that just because. No, um, you're right. I, you know what to you're say. gonna be I busy. Got it. I, got I it. want you when I show up. I want all your shit packed. Oh no, no, that's not a problem. Hey, hey, everyone, look at me. Look at me. If anyone who's on the end, anyone who knows, just so you know, Pete on Saturday is helping me paint. So yeah. So I got that going yeah. for me. He's going to be helping me paint the whole apartment <laughs> from wall to wall. <laughs> yeah, Mike, pickup truck. We got a Mike, lot of paint to haul. Mike, I want you. Oh, never mind. I ain't going to do it because it's, it's a bad joke. Right, anyway, <clears throat> so we're doing 10 movies, 10 movies. So, um, so Mike and I. The, the rules, so, so our rules for this are 10 movies that affected us, like like actually affected us in our lives, had had some kind of impact on us. Yes. They're not our favorite movies. They could be god-awful shit movies, but they, yes. they affected us in some way. And so I did. I picked at least three movies that had a negative impact on me in some okay. way, shape, or form. The okay. Three of them, I, three of mine are just like, mm. ooh, I, I would be a better person not having seen this movie. <laughs> Okay. All right. Fantastic. <laughs> so I didn't do too much of that. I, I got one. Uh, I got one set in here that that did have a really negative impact on me. Most of mine are positive, but they're in all kinds of different directions. So um, they're not just like, oh, I love that movie. Eh. There's not. There's almost none of I just I love that movie or I thought that was the funniest thing ever. No. These are ones that that really had an impact on me in yep. some way that's meaningful. And um, shout out to everyone in the chat room. Hey Spence. Uh, hey mom. Uh, and we've got a couple of other people watching. Robert Wood. I used to work with Robert. He's a good, hey. he's a good dude. Good, Robert. Welcome. And uh, there's some other people, too, watching in. Feel free to chime in if you can, if you will. Uh, anytime. Anyone's welcome to chime in. You know, we're going to be – Pete and I are going to be uh, intense, intense with, with our back and forth. But we will try and definitely monitor the chat room. 
Okay. So, uh, all right. How you want to do this, bro? Huh? Can all right. First. All right. So we we didn't get a chance to uh, to sync. We we got our movies listed. So mm -hmm. I'll try and make sure. Don't do any of the ones that that we match on. Let's save those. All right. So Mike. I want you to pick out one of your. I want, to, I want you to pick out your 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 Anchorman, your top Anchorman movie, the one that that you want to save for last. Jeez, but I, but uh. don't make it the last one you want to talk about. It doesn't have to be significant in any way, but just save one for last and highlight it on the on the dock. I mean, do you, uh, uh, but would but you, don't would make you say it the one that I'm highlighting right now. Would you say that that one might be yours too, or no? Um, no, okay. that's that's um. But do we want to save one? Do we want to save one that 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 we both did, and we could talk about that? How about? Look, I, I'm okay. Look, I, whether I mean mine, or yours are in a, what I don't know what order yours are in. If they're in, they're not in any order. Okay. Mine, as you see, as are I've by, outlined, are in are by, by year. They're okay. they're the year that they were released, but I also within around the time that I saw them. So, okay. Um, um, it doesn't. I mean, I would definitely want to go start with my first one. Um, okay. So, uh, what's my? Oh God, that's a tough one. Probably know, though, the right? one that I highlighted, maybe, huh? All right, go ahead, save that one for last. All right, that's fine. Oh Jesus Christ! Hold on one second. Yes, what? <laughs> Hi, ladies and gentlemen. Pete is having okay, family. Come here. No, no, family come here. Time. Come here. Hey, everybody. Oh, hey, everybody. Hold up, hold up, hold up, real quick. Everybody, oh come here, come my here, come here, come here, God. You see, yes. mm. if I if if here, I didn't on. have these little times on the show, oh here, put it, put her yeah, earring. There you go. So Look you can at hear what's this. Going on. If I didn't have any time on the show to see my favorite girl in the world, I would never get to see you. Oh my God! Like, what are you like? Seventeen? Are you off to college almost now? No. No. <laughs> hey, tell say, say out loud. We're talking about movies, like movies that impact us most. What movie have you seen so far in your life? Would you pick out as the number one movie that had an impact on you that that really just stands out instantly? Is it Little and Mermaid? ladies and gentlemen, while she's thinking, no. let me just okay. introduce, and for anyone who doesn't know, yes. London Bryant. Say hi. hi. This is my daughter. If you've never if you've never seen her before, pick a movie. What do you, What do you think? Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Oh, yep. No, that's Ooh. a good one. That's a good. One. All right. Harry, Harry Potter Potters. has affected her. She's watched it. Yeah. How many times you've seen this? The whole series, like what, twenty times? Twelve times. Twelve at times, least. at least, at least. And, and your, okay, aunt, your aunt, your huh? aunt Spence, who you you've never met, is saying hi. Good old aunt Spence. Say hi, Spence. That's hi, hi, aunt Spence. Yeah, <laughs> she's in the chat room. She's over here. <laughs> okay, all right, baby, let me do my show. Good night. I love I you. I love hey, you. Tell her I love her. Mm, and Mike says she loves. He loves you too. She loves you. Yeah, that's. Yeah, nice. I'm sorry. Yeah. No. Yeah. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> anyway, so all right. So let, let's just do it in, in any order. Mike, do you want to go first? Or you want me to go first? Uh, but, 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 I'll tell you what, I'll go first. Let me start with okay. this because this is one of the uh, – it's the first – one of the first early memories of a movie that I've had. And okay. one of the reasons that it is difficult for me was that I saw this movie. All right, I'm going I'm to say what it was from 1971, and I saw it a uh, little, bit, little bit later than that because I was yeah, – You think? This, yeah, this movie, came, this movie came out in 71. I was born in 72. Right. Um, and I may have seen it when I was about five or six. So um, I was just old enough. It was this movie that I haven't mentioned yet is called The Andromeda Strain, the original uh, movie based on Michael Crichton's book. Um, and it was really billed as a very suspenseful, very I, – I probably – I would say, Pete, that it could be labeled as like the – uh, almost the Silence of the Lambs of its time, but more in a in a sci-fi way. You know what I mean? Right. Very suspenseful. So uh, I was I was uh, I, I saw this movie, and one of the things that in uh, when I shouldn't have been watching it, but uh, you know, hey, parental supervision is a bitch, isn't it, mom and dad? So right. um, <laughs> you know, it, it was um, it was this scene where, and if anyone, you know, uh, spoiler alert. Uh, people, it was a, a, an infection where people's blood was uh, congealing or boiler alert. Turning, it was turning to dust basically. And right, so they were, right. they were like experiment. They were out in in you know, their, their their little spacesuit things out in the world, and they were they were cutting people open and 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 like dust. Their blood, like red crystals, were pouring out of their veins. And right. for a child who barely understands what the concept of blood is, but you know knows that that's not blood, but yet that's what's happening. And you know the the I guess what would you call it the um, the I guess yeah the the construct of the 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 idea the 
um, concept just through me and it kind of scared me and but I, I was still stuck you know when you're that kid and you just you have to keep watching and yeah yeah it was suspenseful and I'm, I'm learning over yeah so uh, that just really scared the crap out of me that movie I mean it scared but, but and did you and did, like, did you think about it like like did it did it affect you as a kid like did you expect to did you ever expect to see anyone else have like stuff come out of their veins where you like did it affect yeah, you affect you it did it, it all right so till this day i have a ultra i have a sensitivity to needles when i was younger i couldn't stand <laughs> needles and getting right. shots and drawing blood. not you but drawing blood now i'm fine getting shots even i'm fine but i cannot okay. give blood because okay. i it's like i feel the needle in there and i may there maybe there is i think that there's some weird connection there i'm not really? going to say that there's not you know um, so it definitely had an impact and I've always, as a kid, squeamish about blood. I mean, could never, never, like, I, I just like a lot of kids are fascinated by blood when like, you know, you're, Oh, I get to see a dog get, you know, get an operation. Like I had the opportunity to see a veterinarian perform a cesarean section to bring puppies out. Yeah. No, I didn't. I, I was under the table. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. So. All right. Very good. That's a good first start. You know what? I'm going to take a cue from you. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm right. gonna name. I'm gonna name a horror movie, but I have to name three, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. Okay. It's a little bit of a cheat, but but it, it'll make sense when I explain it. So, these three movies, I all I saw all of them when I was very young, mm -hmm. right? And uh, like you, there was cover your ears, Mama Marsh, earmuffs. There was very little parental guidance <clears throat> uh, or coverage, as it were. Um, and uh, uh, so they each had an effect on me, but not not any one of them in particular was a whole lot. But but together they all kind of added up. So it was Son of the Blob, right? Uh -huh. It was a nineteen seventy something. It was the green blob. So you had the original blob, which was like uh, black, looked like red. Yeah. Yeah. No, it was black. It was black. Oh. Um, and then because it's a black and white movie, so it was black. The, then oh, Jesus Christ. So right. No, no, I'm serious. So, no, but then Son Son of Blob came out, and it was green. And it was like it got into the waterway and it was like shooting out of the shower on people and eating them. And one person that was in the drain, they looked down and it shot up out of the drain. And like, dude, I would take showers and I would look up to make sure that the blob <laughs> wasn't coming down on me. I mean, for years, for years right, right, afterwards. Right. Same thing with, with the movie The Hand, which was about this disembodied hand that would like hunt people down and kill them, like choke them and stuff. And I was always like looking behind the couch for this hand. And then the movie Piranha... And the piranha might even affected me more than the other two in that I would get – I would be swimming in like a lake or a river. You know my family's from West Virginia, right? So I'd be yeah. like swimming in the lake there or a river there um, or even sometimes in a pool. And I would always race to the side to see how fast I could get to the side in case piranhas attacked. <laughs> so so right. those three had that effect on me. And it was – dude, it was years. I mean I was like maybe 12 or 13 before I stopped really like worrying – about that. that that you know i mean as children we we develop irrational fears based on a what we're told and b what we see and right. um you know uh, other kids can have way more of an impact than other uh than our parents especially so you know you get when you, and you get kids messing with you and stuff so, so, so yeah robert robert thought i was gonna say the thing and you know what robert funny fact funny fact you know uh i didn't see the thing uh, and this is so hard for people to believe until this past year. First time I saw the movie. Wait, wait, the thing, was that, is that the one that was read the, the blob? It was a blob or was, was there was, a newer nah, remake of the blob? It was, was like read? a Meller. No, it was like a Meller, you know, it would like attack people and like, oh. like take their form and it would oh, be like Stephen King's the thing. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah and yeah, it was okay, with, okay. with Kurt Russell, you know, from the eighties. Right, right? Right, 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 right. Yeah. I hadn't seen it. And I think I was talking on lines. I'd mentioned, I admitted that. And Paul Cooley was like, you need to fix that shit right now. Because right? that's one of his favorite movies. Right, so right. I did. I did. Within like a couple of weeks, I went and I fixed it. Um, and how and was it was it? fucking fantastic. I loved it. I wish I had seen oh. it earlier. I just, I don't know how I missed it. I wasn't avoiding it. I just never saw it. All right, Mike, what's your second one? Okay, so uh, my second movie, I'm going to go in a positive direction. Or should I say a positive erection? Um, because the, the movie that I saw that was from 1978, but I probably saw it closer to 1981 or 82. 
Right. Uh, I was probably about 11 or 12. Uh, and anyone from the Maryland area, and especially from the East Coast, might know a little pre-cable service that was called Super TV. <laughs> Super TV! Yes. Yep. It was a subscription service uh, that... Um, you could you would subscribe to and like it was on a channel where until like 54 yeah it was on 54 exactly it was in it was a still back then it was a wnuv station in baltimore yep. and um so you could uh you would buy this box and subscribe to their service and after five o'clock the signal would be scrambled and uh you have to have the descrambler box well Someone that I used to live with, I'm not going to put anyone under the bus. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, but you're not going to say Bud uh, Not my mom, but uh, right. someone else <laughs> had, had, had an illegal box, uh, Statue of Limitations. And, um, right. Hashtag so, limitations. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so, you know, we, we, I, you know, we watch these movies and all. And, then, and so, uh, but he didn't subscribe or he had it so that I couldn't watch even I couldn't watch the um, the porno stuff that was after eleven, but I was able to watch, of all things, way too young, about the ripe age of say eleven ish, probably. Uh, I was able to watch Animal House. Nice, it's a good one. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, definitely if you're gonna have the, for your first time seeing boobs on screen, that's definitely a, yeah. a one I would you know recommend. <laughs> You know, curiously, there's not a lot of boobs in that movie. There's there's, there's not a lot no. of boobs in it. it. It gets like a bad rap as being more wild than it was. Yeah, yeah, it was it was it was definitely a little you know crazy for the time. Yeah. but it wasn't like it was that much boobs. But then again, you know, you're talking about like the the dean's wife getting, and then there's the girl who's underage yeah. and the underage, so there was yeah. controversial stuff that oh there was no 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 there was there's definitely some uh, some me too triggering going on in that movie yeah, so. sure sure absolutely um, definitely but uh, for me it was uh, my first exposure to the concept uh, of sex uh, right. and and the first time that I saw boobies and um, certainly not the last yeah you know what's funny so. I saw Animal House in the theaters, 1978, eight years old. Mark took me to see it. <laughs> eight years old, baby! So if you ever wonder how this shit happened, it might be some of the movies that people let me watch. <laughs> and you know what? If you, are you not? Are you good? Are you good with that? Yeah, or, okay. or, the, or the movies that people didn't let us watch. Right. So... I, you know, Mike, I'll follow your lead on that again, and All I'm right. gonna do, I'm gonna do a little, I'm gonna do a little ditty from uh, 1979 called Alien. Um, ah. I saw that movie in the theaters. My aunt Barbara took took me to see it. She, uh -huh. neither her or I knew what we were getting into. I was nine, <laughs> and uh, it was, a, it was, was a space R? movie. Was that oh, rated oh, R? Oh, oh, was it rated R? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, not for nudity. Yeah. Right, Not for nudity, right, but I know it we, was. I mean, still seeing Sigourney Weaver's was, panties was, was uh, primo. Yeah, it was good. No, that I was mean, good. Day, she's yeah. got a nice, you know, sure. all right. set, of, set of equipment. Yeah, she's all right. Um, but but the scary, the scary in that was uh, was was very real. It was very very fucking scary for me. Uh, I remember I came home that night and took a shower, and was scared that the alien was going to come in and get me in the shower, um, but. But yeah, that oh. the reason why I have that on my list was I saw that at nine, and I gotta tell you, it scared the fucking bejesus out of me. But goddamn, I became a fan of Giger and hadn't even realized, had yeah. no idea who Giger was, didn't know it was created by an artist, or whatever. But I just love that thing, you know. You like, were captivated once, by the by the just the alien once you got to see it. Oh my it. god, yeah, and and it, that actually colored my love of sci-fi. Yeah. It did. Um. For, forever forever Agreed. Oh, i agree and yep. and i think that was one of the it, to me it's one of the greatest fucking movies ever made but yeah that that really affected me that was a scary fucking movie okay so, so yep. i mean you're making a bold statement and i'm, I'm i don't i'm not going to challenge it i'm going to say but give me some uh, reasons give me some of your supporting uh oh it's uh, well i mean i could do a whole it could do a whole show on alien the fucking pacing was beautiful um you can tell how good the writing is because in 1979, they cast a woman in a role that would typically be cast by a man, mm -hmm. right? And you didn't really notice it. 
It was so fucking natural. She yeah. Sigourney Weaver was so fucking good in it that you don't even think about whether she's a woman or a man or whatever and she takes on what would be Hollywood's traditional male role during that time so it wasn't overdone or underdone it was, it was, it was perfect um, the story with the suspense was was um, t the timing on the suspense was unbelievable the yeah. it was creepy as shit uh, the special effects were off the chain the design of the alien was I mean genius Right. right. The acting was fantastic. Every actor in that movie was, was they brought it and they did shit in that movie to like make it more real. Like when they had the chest burster pop out yeah. um, and no one knew. Right. Mm -hmm. The only person oh, yeah, who knew. The, oh, right. Yeah, the, the whole, the whole <laughs> and everybody's like, didn't know. right. Yeah. And that was perfect. Uh, the, that that reveal of the robot of, of Ash when he when you find out he's a fucking, you know, android it was like, oh, shit. It. Perfect. Perfect. The movie is so good. So good in so many ways. Oh, yeah. And like Jeffrey Talanian, hey, Jeff, was saying also that, and it, you spoke on this, Pete, about the, um, the anticipation and kind of the reveal, and you knew what was right around the corner. And I agree with him, and I agree with you about the pacing of that movie was the gold standard for how you paced and revealed certain things, and that you, there was more of a, of a fear factor um, in, in suspense by holding back and slowly revealing something, you know, um, about the thing that you're, that, that is, uh, plaguing the, the fear. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so, yeah. So, you know, all things, I, I totally agree. I totally agree with you. And if you want to know anything about why we are both sort of, um, uh, on board as far as Sigourney Weaver being, you know, having, and it being very surprising, as you said, Pete, and you dead on about the female role at that time and how it was so natural and, why even today it seems so much more difficult to make a movie that good that that was that was done so long ago and yet you know there 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 is so many so much more talent and um mm -hmm. you know it, but watch our episode from last week when we interviewed Starla Hutchton and we talked about her book which was an all female cast uh so if uh, I just recommend that for anyone who's interested in that discussion yeah. But, you, you know, there's there's one more piece of this, and I'll, and I'll go, and you're going to see this in a lot of our older movies that we talk about, is that uh, Hollywood changed, and I can't remember, like, around what time it changed, but Hollywood, and I remember watching a video on this, a guy talking about this, somebody who really knows, I, I don't really know, I, I got this from somebody else, but they talked about how Hollywood went from just wanting to make a profit, you know, and this is, this is up until, you know, in our lifetime, that Hollywood was more concerned about making kick-ass movies and summer the summer blockbuster there was only like that only happened that didn't happen every summer there wasn't right. there wasn't always a summer blockbuster whereas now it's it uh, there's a blockbuster machine they had this yeah. whole process of making blockbusters and it's a, it's a whole thing but back then they would make movies movies would stay in the theaters for months and months and months a movie could stay in the theaters for six months and nowadays no they they got to turn tables they got to get that movie out so they can get another one in and make you know make cheddar and i think that has hurt movies because it would take them, you know, years to make a movie sometimes. Um, and, and this is without all the crazy special effects work they have to do afterwards. This was just in the process of making the movie. Yeah. Uh, and I just don't think they make, you know, there's some movies that they make that are still good, but they're rare. I mean, they're so rare. Uh, and maybe they were just as rare back then and we're, we're having a memory of them because it's like, oh, there were so many more. It's like, well, yeah, but if you smash your whole fucking childhood together, it'll seem like there were more. Uh, but, I think they're yeah, making you know? more movies in general now, too. Yeah. I really and it, do. And it's like diluting the, the pool, mm -hmm. you think? A little yeah, bit. Could, little be, bit yeah. could be that. But, could be that. Yeah. All right. What, um, what's your next one? Okay. Um, my next one. Oh, real quick, though. Uh, uh, Alien. Who directed Alien? Do you know? Do you remember? Yeah, Ridley uh, Scott. I'm, Oh, oh, really? Scott directed. Oh yeah, he was a director. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. James yeah, Cameron Ridley... did Aliens. Okay, um, so yeah, Ridley Scott, and uh, just to mention, like Jonathan said, like Spielberg, a lot of people uh, are in early days were definitely the um, the pioneers of what of why we have such such good movies today as well. You know, there's a definitely a progression. Um, that said. Uh, I want to touch a little bit on my next movie, which is, uh, and I believe this is a crossover. So are you okay with me going for this one now? Uh, yeah, let's do it. Okay. All right. All right. Because this movie had a very large impact on me, very big impact on me. Uh, and that is Tron. Um, oh, yeah. and, and, if, and most, I would say most sci-fi geeks 
of our age or, or, or around there um, are probably have an impact for that. But let me just first tell you about uh, Tron, okay? Because first, um, it was the first uh, movie that had extensive use of CGI, of 3D CGI, okay? Right. It, extensive use, meaning there was three, there were 15 minutes of fully computer generated CGI in that movie. Okay, that includes the light cycle sequence and everything else. Tron made history and it captivated everyone with never before seen cinematography. And for me, <laughs> okay, for, for me, I would, um, I would later realize this, that Tron was the seminal work that germinated my geekish zygote and that uh, it would later become me, this fully robust sci-fi geek you see before you. Okay? Okay. So... I don't know if you see what I did there. It's a I saw it. I, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. whole germination thing. Okay. Yeah, right. So I got okay. it. We got it. We got it. All right. I, didn't, I don't know if I need to <laughs> mansplain that. No? No. Stop mansplaining me. Okay. Uh, no, but uh, in all seriousness, that movie, uh, from the first time I saw it to like every time I see it, it still has some kind of an impact on me that is like just, just uh, wondrous. And yeah, there's so much, so much better graphics. Yes. But there's a I, and part of it is a nostalgia. Part of it is a tie to the past. That when I watch that movie, I am just taken back to even the all of of remembering what I was seeing for the first time all over again. So that is definitely something oh, you just want to. Oh, Jonathan! Jonathan! How you dare what did he you? What did he say? Shame on you! He said. He said. Thank God I'm young enough to have never seen Tron or its god awful remake. Boo! Oh, boo! <laughs> oh, boo! <laughs> That's all right. Hey, you know what? It is. I will agree with Jonathan in that if I had been had grown up 10, 15 years later and I saw Tron, I'd have been like, "What in the fuck is this?" Because it wouldn't have had the impact. Movies, it, because it set the bar and was so like ahead of its time that right. when other people started doing it, it seemed like you know if to go back, it seemed like what the hell is this? Right. You know. I mean, all right, let, let's let's think about this for a minute, okay? You're a guy, right? And you're sitting at a I computer, think so. right? And you're you're sitting at a computer like you are, but behind you, instead of whatever's behind you, is this thing that is going to digitally erase you. And by then, we never knew uh, maybe Star Trek did beaming. But the, 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 the essence is this is the, the only other time that you're being, like, digitally taken away and your bits are being put into a computer. Now, we can suspend all the, the belief or, or the reality of how impossible that is because, well, we were young enough to do that, first of all. But second of all, it was just amazing to even think, oh, my God, I can, you know, like, just to, to – to, I guess uh, vicariously live through that character. You are in a computer, you know. Yeah. And to us, we were that young. We knew what is in a computer. Oh my god! You know, it's like so wondrous. Well, I, you know, I'll tell you what it did for me because it's on my list. So, right, so right. the reason why it affected me, it it didn't affect me in the turn me on to sci-fi i was already there it, you know between alien and the next one i'm going to mention right. i was already turned on to sci-fi tron, what tron did for me it made me love 3d and like i remember mm. being that age and saying when i was watching i was like i want to i want to do 3d i want to work in 3d for a living you know like i, I want to that's what i want to mm -hmm. do now i want to not exactly doing that although Volume i will <laughs> i will tell you this no i will tell you no, this I know. today as a matter of fact, I was modeling in 3D for work. I was modeling up a uh, prototype for this military thing that I can't talk about. But uh, I had some engineers come in and they uh -huh. were like, yeah, I like that design. And we moved some shit around in 3D and stuff and uh, refined the design right on the screen. And it was pretty badass. I might even get a 3D print of it. But anyway, uh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't wind up doing movie stuff like that for a living. But I, I do work in 3D as an engineer from time to time. So, mm -hmm. eh, you know, and I did yeah. it as a hobby. And, um, you know. Taught Jay Libby how to do it, so yeah. uh, you're all welcome for that, by the way. <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, uh, so uh, Jonathan, uh, what else? Did, uh, somebody else was saying something on here. Um, oh, oh, never mind. Um, oh, a lot of people talking about Last Starfighter. Not one of my favorites, but I just... <laughs> Yes, Scott, one Tron was my seminal vessel. Vesticles. Yeah. Vesticles. <laughs> all right, so because we're you know we're taking a while to get through this we gotta get through all these flash gordon had to make this list had to could not leave that off my list I almost right put that as the worst movie but i had a right. uh, never mind what oh no, you just, suck just no, I, so 
so I know I've said this on the show before. I am not going to go into Flash Gordon. Watch all of our shows, okay? You'll see references as to why. It just had to make the list. I will say just mm-hmm. real quick as a wrap-up uh, that Flash Gordon was the first – really cool like adventurous sci-fi movie that i had seen that wasn't like a 1950s or 60s you know space monster movie uh because i hadn't seen star wars yet i did not see i did not i did not see star wars (laughs) until after empire strikes back came out okay so you gotta remember for a lot of people, Star Wars was their introduction into that whole, like, you know, and, and it adventure, was. sci-fi, yeah, whatever. Yeah. But for me, it was Flash Gordon, and that's why it had more of an impact on me than than Star Wars did. And that's it. I'm leaving it there. Next, Mike? Uh, okay. Um, it, interesting that uh, you, you said that, uh, in, in essence, uh, Tron – you say Tron was basically what uh, born your passion – for uh 3d right right well um the first fully 3d um graphic or 3d yeah movie which was toy story was mine and i was a little bit older like that was uh toy story came out in 95 all right so i was older um but to see an entire movie fully realized that everything was done on a computer for this entire movie all of it. No, not one human being, other than their voices, obviously, but not right. one human being was ever filmed in that movie. And it blew my mind. And it was at that point that on that day that I decided, and again, I had, I born a passion for uh, 3D modeling and stuff. And it never went anywhere. But as you know, uh, someone, some people may know, hashtag uh, maybe um, uh, also um, – Hashtag statue of limitations, maybe, hopefully. But you know, I ran a, I ran a little server, and uh, yeah. you know, I was, I was dealing in, uh, in uh, Maya 3D and uh, you know, 3D Studio Max and all the fine things, and only to get lessons and get videos to learn how to use it. And I did. I mean, I was, I, I mean, I was never by any means able to and make. Bryce, character. didn't, didn't you fuck around in Bryce some? Yeah, I did. Yeah, you spent some yeah. time in Bryce. I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Yep. All right. So and, and so okay. it was just it was a very to me that I, I cannot tell you how many times I've seen that movie until this day. Again, watching it, knowing wow, there are so much, so many more movies with such uh, more, I guess, sophisticated three um, D graphics that have that, but it all came from that movie. And for that, it's I guess it's kind of like the same thing when you watch like. Um, old black and white movies and like there's some some kind of a nostalgia but also this is like this is without this we would not have all the other things oh, yeah. we have, so. and, and i gotta tell you for like again just like tron when toy story came out it was a, a, a an amazing like you go back now and it's still like watchable it's not like this super horrible 3d it's not as good as like the later toy stories but it's still i mean it still holds it still well well done i mean they they killed it all right yeah so so uh I'm going to do one. This, you know, Jeff Telanian is in the room, so this one goes out to him. Okay. Conan the Barbarian. That that movie was dude, that movie fucking changed me. Like it it changed my persona. Um Arnold Schwarzenegger was the man in the weightlifting and stuff like that, and you know, Mr. Universe and Mr. World. Oh, and was he the Conan? He was the Conan, right? Oh. The Conan of the barbarians, oh, okay. uh, of, of Barbaria, the and he, <laughs> <laughs> so he, nice. he, he, um, so my cousin Stuart, you know, Shannon Lamiding Dong, my cousin Stuart. Hey, I had dinner with him tonight, by the way. Uh, a couple people, anyway. So oh, Stuart, yeah, yeah, Shannon Lamiding Dong was into, uh, he was into lifting weights, like like lifting, lifting weights, you know, because it was yeah. it was you know like uh, early eighties, and and you know. Um, Oh, it was 1980, I believe, was when that movie came out. So let's Pretty say early. late 70s and stuff. You know, oh. there was a, a pumping iron was that had come out, mm-hmm. and, and the fucking weightlifting magazines and stuff. And and then Conan comes out, and I'm already starting to lift weights with my cousin a little bit, uh, and I'm into all the Dungeons and Dragons and fantasy stuff. And then I see fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger, Conan the Barbarian, on screen. Conan the Barbarian, boy. Biggest, uh, biggest shit, right? And I'm like. I want to be that. So I started, dude, I started lifting like crazy. Now, 
I was 12. Mm. I was 82, I think. I think it was 82. Right. Uh, but I was like 12. And I started lifting weights like crazy. You were like but 80 pounds soaking wet back then, right? I was. I was a skinny little guy. But I became a very like Bruce Lee-ish, like muscular Wiry. skinny guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But, um, but yeah, no, I, it, that was that that changed me in that way. I I I fell in love with like lifting weights and stuff, and I did. I lifted weights all through high school, and then I discovered other things like drinking and smoking and stuff, and I ah uh, the priest so set. Much, yeah. But then you know, then then you know, you and I did some uh, you know weightlifting. Yeah, some tea bag lifting. Yes, some tea, yes, tea, some tea bag oh. lifting. Anyway, all right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna get dick dick. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right. So, what's your next one, Mike? <laughs> all right. Um, my next one, uh, and and uh, believe, this was very hard for me. And I'm gonna have to say this. I'm gonna. I'm not, I'm not calling it audible per se. <sighs> Maybe I am or not. I don't know. Uh, so the Breakfast Club slash the all the John Hughesian uh, movies. Okay. Okay. Um, that that I. I I want to spend a very short time talking about The Breakfast Club, why that, that was, uh, uh, in particular, that movie had an impact on me. Uh, that was the first R-rated movie my dad legit took me to see um, in 85. And, uh, I, you know, I loved it. Even then, it was weird. Cause, you know, I, I, don't, I honestly don't remember how old I was, maybe 12 or 13 or something like that. But it was just the fact that uh, – I was right around those, those supposedly those kids age and um, all the things they were experiencing, or I was, you know, like a, a precursor and, yeah. and all. but also that later uh, a very good friend of mine who I was friends with ve- for a very long time, uh, his name was Eric. He and I memorized word for word, the entire script of that movie, like all backwards and fronts, every character we would sit on the phone. Cause you know, like, all right, everyone, but you, you know, you like to take on the Molly Ringwald part, right? That was your I, part. I, I, listen, we split up the, whatever. So, um, <laughs> I'm not fat. Anyway. Um, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, almost had a spit take. Damn it. <laughs> okay. So the, the fact that, uh, Back back in the those eighties, uh, there was nothing to do. Okay, instead of playing video games all day, okay, we would we would sit on the phone, you know, with our friends. You know, a lot of just basically, even the boys would do that. So, uh, I used to sit on the phone with Eric, and we would do a run through of the movie. Sometimes we'd actually do a run through twice. We would we would take characters and then trade off and do the movie again. And we could literally do it like the entire movie in like a half hour. We got so good. Um, and and for some reason that movie, um, we would st- we would do other movies here and there a little bit. Like I think um, uh, for a while we were we also did um, what was that movie? Uh, uh, it was another John Hughes Weird Science. But oh, yeah, that movie uh, was just a, had a a big impact just because of memorizing every line of that movie. Dude. At one point, I knew every line from every character of that movie. God, we're not gonna get through this. Okay, good. Are you? <laughs> we oh, need well. to we need to speed up a little bit. Okay. 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 So, so, all right. So, I guess I took way too long. Princess Bride as well. Princess Bride has to kind of be in that slot too. I, I can't. I got you. And for <laughs> obvious reasons, clearly, all right, clearly. Next, Mike, it's inconceivable. Go. All right. So, all right. So, my next one. Let's share this one. Let's do another shared one. Okay. Uh, Pulp Fiction. Oh, all right. Yeah. That movie. Okay, so when it came out, I had no idea what the hell I was getting into. I just thought it would be cool, right? It just Uh looked cool, you know, gangsters. I fell in love. I I found out what unbelievably good dialogue could be, what a movie drenched in deep, thick, rich, battery fucking dialogue. Quick question. What? Did you see... Uh, Reservoir Dogs first, or was it? No, I saw that second. Right, and, me too. Okay, and I'm, I'm sorry, gonna say, gonna... and I'm gonna say that um, it was right after that because I was like, yeah, this is Tarantino guy, right? Right. right so right. then, um, uh, and I had seen True Romance, which had a lot of that, but it wasn't directed by Tarantino, so it also had a lot of other things mixed in. And I, you know, I didn't put that on my list, but that would be if it was an honorable mention. There's honorable uh, mentions, yeah, yeah. True Romance is fucking that is an honorable mention to me. Big up time. until the I last fucking... fifteen minutes, not no. enough said. I love that movie. Anyway, yeah. No, so, no, so I'm, 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 True Romance. That's the, that one the one with Christian Slater. 
No, you're oh, thinking. Oh no, you're thinking Dust to Dawn, right? Yeah, Dust to Dawn. Never mind. Sorry, and sorry. Okay. Is... All right. Anyway, that does not get one. Um, no. But anyway, that, that's really all I have to say about about. Uh, that's the only way that really affected me. It was just, it was just a okay. super fucking cool movie, and I have a whole oh, funny oh, story Paul, about you... dates and shit with that movie. But I'm just gonna skip that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. Well, for me, just real quick about Pulp Fiction. Yes, it was sort of a, a an eye opening experience of what a re- like what a movie that's taken to 11 can be like um, just as far as the time swapping. And I uh, recently, I watched that movie uh, with the exact going through the series of events. Like there, uh, there was some, there's some version of it where they just, you watch the movie in, in every order, like, you know, in the right. chronological order it's supposed to be not that good, not as good as it, it was by doing it this way. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, all right. All right. So that's Paul. Oh, and, and, and Jonathan yeah. Reinhardt, you, you mentioned, you mentioned clerks with like really deep like dialogue and rich thing. Yes, we only have ten movies to mention though. So yes, yes. <laughs> there's so many. There's so many. There's so many. I, but I totally agree. Clerks, absolutely fucking fantastic movie. All rich right. dialogue, awesome. All right, next Mike? one doesn't need to have be talked about too much for me because for me it is uh, one of the worst movies I've ever seen, uh, yeah. and that is the Three Amigos. The Three <laughs> Amigos. The movie. <laughs> Is, is till this day is the only movie I have ever walked out of. I have sat through some shitty movies before too. I have right. I have given a movie the benefit of the doubt ninety nine point nine percent of the time, but the Three Amigos? No, no. I walked out around I would say the uh, three quarters of the way, um, and and it because it was just not going anywhere, and it was right. not going anywhere slowly. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Too painfully slowly, right? Yeah. yeah. Comedy gold. Uh, he better not be talking. To, Jonathan better not be talking about the three amigos. <laughs> Boo! <laughs> no. <laughs> All right. So my He's next one. Me. My next one. Um, okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go, go with this one. All right. So this movie taught me. This movie taught me to say, what the fuck? This movie was a bad influence on me. I love the movie, but it really... There was this one scene, this one line in it, and it fucking affected me in a way that I was like, yeah, sometimes you just got to say, what the fuck? Uh-oh. And Mike, you know me growing up. I did a lot of that. Risky business. So um, that was – oh, because I remember that line. Sometimes yep. you just got to say, what the fuck? If you can't yeah. say it, you can't do it. Right. And, I, dude, yeah. I'm telling you, dude, I'm, I, I swear to God, that movie – it made me take it to heart, and there were times I would like think about whether I should do something, and I would go, you know, sometimes you just gotta say what the fuck, right. and I would so do what it. If you and you know, a house, a house with all with no furniture, you know, fuck it, what the, whatever. Yeah, <laughs> what the fuck, right? <laughs> so anyway, that's it. That's all risky business did for me. That's <laughs> oh, Scott, otherwise, Howard otherwise it was a decent movie. I have mixed emotions about Howard the Duck. Uh, no. I'm just saying I have mixed emotions about it. I don't. I hate that fucking movie. Okay. Well, there you have it. (laughs) Ferris Bueller, again, another – Ferris Bueller was another um, uh, John Hughes movie, as a matter of fact, uh, which does get um, honorable mention. Now, moving on to my next one because, again – Ferris Bueller. Oh, so good, Ferris Bueller. But, yeah, honorable mention, yep. Okay. uh, Yeah, we are really – man, we – is it really – we're oh, chewing through time, me. buddy. No, no. Go. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. American History X. Oh, good uh, movie. Good very choice. profound movie for me. And I did not see Well, it came out in uh, 98, right? Yeah, right. it came out in 98. And you probably saw it later like me. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw it was on cable, right? Right. It was on cable. I had, I had already watched. Like, I, I, you know this happens to you, especially when we were younger, right? You're, you're watching like a movie, uh, and, and you're like, oh, shit, there's another movie. I think I had just watched um, – what was that movie? Uh, 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 the, 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 book of, the Book of Eli or something, right? And okay. that in itself is, a, is like a fucking whoa movie, right? Yeah. And I'm already like blown. I'm thinking, how can I get blown anymore? <laughs> Don't answer that. So right. um, I accidentally let the next movie start. Yeah. And it was American History X. Right. And it was 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> and you couldn't stop, right? And I couldn't Here stop. Here comes 4 a.m. It was one of those things where I'm sitting on the edge of the coffee because t- it was like it was literally I was getting ready to turn the TV off, right? And and I just it was like uh what uh, uh, what? And then Back I just sat light. there, 
I sat there yeah. for some. I'm just gonna see. It. I'm gonna see what movie this is. What, what is this? I'll know to watch it later. What is the title? Yeah. Right? Because you, you you fuck with yeah. yourself. You think right? so, right? And and I'm sitting. Look, and I I found myself sitting on the coffee table the whole time. Just I didn't realize it until like halfway through the movie. I am just I haven't moved. And it, it's just if if that movie does not have an impact on you, Jonathan, you're up. You you are heartless. He is. <laughs> yeah, he is. So it may not have. Anyway, no yeah. American History X. For, <laughs> For the topics for the um for uh how uncomfortable it makes you feel uh it is wonderful and honorable mention along movies like that i would have to give uh, uh fight club um yeah fight club uh, did not make my list uh but I, it is honorable I was, mention i, was, I love I, fight club yeah yeah love. i know you do. one of my That's favorite movies okay go ahead you're next okay um oh yeah all right so yeah. Okay. Uh, which one do I do next? Um, uh, which one do I want to wrap up with? Uh, okay. I'll wrap up. Right, I'm gonna do this. One. So I did Conan, right? So Conan affected me in a way that you know I wanted to be like Ugh. I wanted to be like you know muscly and stuff. But dude, somewhere in the early '90s, I can't remember when I saw this. '91, '92, '90, somewhere, somewhere in there. '93 uh, maybe. I saw nine and a half weeks, and then I'm gonna say Blue Orchid. Because it's really almost this, it, they're different movies, but Mickey Work basically plays the same kind of like you know like rich uh -huh. businessman, good looking dude. I wanted to be Mickey Rourke so fucking bad. Like I wanted to look like him. I wanted to. I just. I. I was like I emulated like that look. I wanted that. I wanted like that look. So I you know I wound up doing my hair a lot like his, and he was a pretty boy, and I was a pretty boy. Um, but yeah, I, I I did the whole like uh, that that suave Mickey, Rourke. and fortunately, um, I now look better than Mickey Rourke does now. <laughs> I mean, so, I outgrew no, you, motherfucker. Hey, hey, guess what? <laughs> guess what? Now, now compared to Mickey Rourke, you're a pretty boy. <laughs> right, <laughs> pretty much, pretty much. No, but I did. I was it was just something about him was just so fucking cool in my eyes, you know that. And I know he's a piece of shit, right? I mean, he's he's yeah. a dickhead. Like in real life, he's a you know he fucking beat his wife and shit. I know he's a piece of shit. I get that. But the the movie image that he portrayed, yeah. I just loved. I just fucking love that shit. I got to give honorable mention to my favorite Mickey Rourke movie. Okay, Harley Davidson and the Marlboro. Oh, yeah. You yeah. know what? And that is one of those movies that uh -huh. we both know that that's not a good movie, right? We both know that that's a cheesy. It's a pulp. In, it's like a pulp movie, dude. It, 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 it's like it's it's better than Flash Gordon, but it's it's in that club. It's not, it got terrible reviews, and I understand why. It's cliche. It's goofy, but I love it. I love. Don't get me wrong. I love it. I love that I'm, movie. I, I'm gonna have to watch it again because it's been a while since I watched. But I used to have that on um, VHS. Yeah, the kids yeah. may not know what that is. That is a uh, you know, a right? Tape, video cassette, Ca tape. It's magnetic Ca tape. tape. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, okay. Nine and a half weeks. That's good. I mean, you know, nothing wrong with that. Well, one. the wrestler. I, oh yeah, I mean, they called out the wrestler. Wrestler was good. This fucking that was a great movie. Yeah, yeah, that was good. Yeah. All right. Uh, for me, my next to last one is a bad piece of shit movie that should have never been made because. It just – I've never seen a movie that just pulled its pants down and took a steaming dump of diarrhea right on the book, and that movie is Battlefield Earth. Now, say what you will about what's-his-face, uh, you know, Mr. Um, Scientology, but I, not even knowing anything about Scientology, I read the entire Battlefield Earth, and I loved that book. And if anyone has not read that book but is thinking, well, if it's anything like the movie, it's not. But for me, I enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd be curious to see what other people thought. The book actually is almost like two parts. It's almost like two books. But uh, I, I enjoyed it thoroughly. Um, it was just – it was the first time a book, though, grabbed me and, like, brought me into not only the sci-fi part but all other parts like realizing that oh in sci-fi that you can have um you can have politics that's important which is what wraps my you know my my nads up in um the expanse you know what i mean because of the politics right. and it being in right. sci-fi however battlefield earth the movie nothing like the book right oh the movie was garbage the movie was fucking horrible next next okay all right 
So my next one is is a is another. Um, all right, I'm gonna save that one for later. Sorry, I'm gonna do. All right, so somebody's asking about foreign films. This one's foreign, but it's kind of a cheat because it's English. So <laughs> it's, it's not sort of foreign. Um, it 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 is what it's, really. Uh, it's what really made me love British comedy. Like yeah. truly appreciate. It. Now I was into British shows because I think I had been watching Doctor Who already. Yeah. Um, so I, I you know. And this is back when fucking nobody was watching Doctor Who. I was like, I was the only person I met for years and years that watched Doctor Who. Yes. The old Tom Baker shit. Um, not not saying that nobody in this room or our friends didn't. I'm right. just saying of what I knew. Of your contemporaries at your right. age. Right, right. Um, but fucking Monty Python's The Holy Grail. And again, you got to remember, I'm in D&D mode, Conan mode. And then Holy Grail comes out, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? And it was like, it was awesome. It was so, so good. And then I just began to consume Monty Python. Now, I already I watched Benny Hill. I watched a lot of English stuff, but I hadn't really mm -hmm. watched Monty Python. And I just started consuming it. I watched all the shows. Like, I'd watched, you know, uh, Flying Circus. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen all the movies multiple, multiple times. And I used to quote that shit constantly. Um and and you know it was just it was just like like somebody would say I'm so full it's like you couldn't have one more waffle thin mint and they'd be like what are you talking about you know <laughs> or somebody would say to me like how you feeling I'd say I'm feeling better and they'd say they'd say okay better get a bucket I'm gonna throw up right and they're like what and I was just like never mind um, <laughs> but yeah god damn fucking oh, I love that Holy Grail that was that was a shit and I yeah. I love Monty Python I could still sit and watch. Any mining python, anything, yeah. and I history love it. History of the world. Oh my god, yeah. that's so good. No, asshole, asshole. History of the world. It's Mel Brooks. Oh, it's not no. mining python. Shit, that's right. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> what are you doing? No, no. that's a good so, history of the world. Is fucking awesome. Right. Holy Grail. What was the What was the other Monty Python movie though? Oh, like Meaning of Life, uh, Meaning Life, of Life of Brian. I'm sorry, Life of Brian. Um, yes, yes, Jabberwocky. Yes, okay, anyway, that's what I meant to say. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. All right, go ahead. Ooh. Here's your last one, buddy. Okay, my last one. Uh, my last one is uh, the what I will consider the definitive introduction to, and I, I think um, Will Will is it Will Will Conway is that his last name, right? Conway. Yeah, Will, Will Con Conway. Yeah, yeah. Will Not Conway. Conway. He'll, <laughs> he'll he'll agree with me that oh, Time Bandits, fantastic. Oh, I'm sorry. Iron. Go. Uh, yeah, but that's honorable mention. But uh, yeah. Honor Man is the definitive introduction to like the beginning of the yellow brick road of the um, Marvel Cinematic Universe, and it is the movie that uh, captivated me and got me so interested. Like I honestly didn't really care that much about comics before then. You know, I was not that big of a comics. I was not that big of a you? comics person. I was not that big of a comics bro. I was like, yeah, okay. I like some superheroes here and there. Spider Man. I watched the Spider Man no. cartoons. Yeah, I know. Blah, no, blah, I know. Blah, blah, blah. I, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. I know. I know your history. <laughs> but, but for that, and a after that, like uh, it really got me. And since then, from 2008 on, uh, and recently from a lot of the YouTubers that will just go into the um, minutia and the history, so I can kind of um, get the one. So you know, get the. I guess the uh, Reader's Digest version of this, you know, this uh, universe or this whole whole series, and learn. Oh, that's a really cool storyline. I like that. And you know, maybe when I'm old, instead of being like my grandmother sitting in a chair watching Bonanza, I'll read old comics or something. You know, but you know, for now, right. at least I know what I like. So, yeah. So uh, there's that. Uh, who who knew that my favorite of all comic or of all um, comic and Marvel um, universe characters would be deadpool but that is the case yeah how did that um, happen dude i never even liked it. i i never got into deadpool in the comics at all i was not it just it just didn't do anything yeah. like i didn't actually read them i just like the the thought of the character i was kind of like eh right, right. and then the fucking movie comes out, i'm like oh it's so good <laughs> you read the comics and it's hysterical it's such good yeah. writing right it's amazing uh, and anyone who doesn't know this like a lot of the um, deadpool comics are free online I oh, did yeah. not know this until the other day. I found this site, and it's it's legit. I don't know why they're available, but they are. 
Right. I found a bunch of comics. Like the Epic Comic uh, was a line. It was a Marvel line of, of like really cool comics, sort of like a competition for heavy metal in some ways. Yeah. And um, and they're all free because it only it only ran for like ten years. And I downloaded all of them. I used to read Epic, and I was like, I was like, oh shit, I can get them all for free. And then there was all this this other one called Dark Star, which was a comic from back then. My brother was really into, and I downloaded all those. I figured uh, I'll read those at some point because I, I like the ones I read of his. All right. Well, segue. Segue. Uh, can I yeah, really good. quickly, can I yes. just go down? Because I did make a list. I actually had a little table on my notes page of some honorable, other honorable mentions. So that do people you want to do think... those before I do my last one? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I, one more. I apologize. Sorry, that's I fine. Know you I got, got, got one more. Yeah. This was a segue, you know, talking about epic and, and, and heavy metal. One of the movies that really, really changed my life, and this is going to sound dumb, but just go with me here. I'm a guy, okay? I was a guy growing up in the 80s. The movie Heavy Metal. There was, I used to love the magazine and I would buy it and they would sell it to me. And I don't know why they would sell it to me because it said right on the cover, you know, for mature audiences. And I was like 12, 13, 14 and buying this fucking thing. And they had no issues. They'd sell it to me. How um, much was that I, magazine? Oh, dude, it wasn't cheap because back then it was like four or five times the price of a regular yeah. comic. But right. I would five buy those. So, right. five, yeah, bucks, some, five bucks yeah. for trying to make a sale. So. Oh yeah, back then, right, right, exactly. And and um, I love that shit, man. I I just love those stories, but but that wasn't really the big change. I mean, I wanted to see the movie for that, but um, I was, I want to say, I didn't see it when it was in the theaters. I went with my cousin Cindy, and the the person behind the counter asked her. She's like, "You sure you want to take him in to see this?" And Unlike Alien, right? Someone had some sense to not let me see it when I was like 13, I think, <laughs> is when it came out. Um, which I fucking hate that person to this day, by the way. <laughs> uh, still hate that bitch. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> um, so... Not going to mention any names, No, we? no, she, she was right. I have no idea who she was. Uh, she was oh. some fucking movie person. But, uh, you know, she, it was the right call. It was the right call. I just I missed... Anyway, so... When I finally did see it, I was about 16, and I had this crush on this on this girl, and I was afraid to talk to her, right? I had this crush, and I was afraid to talk to her. Imagine me being afraid to talk to a girl, right? No, but I did. I, mean, I really can't. I was, I was still awkward at that time, and I didn't know, no you way. know, and and I just, it, it just kept building up, and I just kept, it just kept getting worse, right? Because, like, right. as time went on, it got, I got even just more and more scared to do it, and I watched Heavy Metal, and... There was just like, you know, just all these like, you know, there was so many boobs in it and then chicks and stuff. And I was just like, I was just like, if I'm ever going to like meet a girl and do the thing, because, you know, I hadn't done the thing yet. I was like, <laughs> I'm going to have to be a fucking man and do this shit. You know, it's like, I want to be like the guys in heavy metal, you know, getting babes and whatever. So, <laughs> so it didn't make me do anything crazy, but it did like kind of force me to like have courage and go talk to the girl and tell her how I felt. And she gunned me down, but that was okay. Cause then I felt so much more relieved and it just, that was it. It broke the shell. And after that I was good to go. I was, you know, when I met a girl and I liked a girl, I could talk to her and, um, and, and, you know, and just say, Hey, look, I like you. You want to go out? You want to do something? You know? And they're like, yeah, sure. Whatever. Or no, whatever. And I'm like, okay, whatever. Um, but yeah, that, that really kind of, I, it, I know it's stupid. I, I know, I know. But when you're like 13, your brain 14, 15, oh no, 16 stupid. at the time, your, your brain's like half cooked and you got all these hormones going and you're just oh, like, yeah. Ooh, no, I don't know what to do with this. You know? <laughs> so, yeah, I was stuck um, in the stupid John Hughes movies. That's that's why I was so insecure. So, you know. Yeah, right, right. You were, you were too busy being ducky. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Blaine? What kind Blaine? of a name is Blaine? What's right. the name of a toaster? <laughs> exactly. Claire's the name of a fat girl. It's like, oh, Christ. I was like, that's such a fucked up line. I, I tell you, the first time I heard that, I was like, Are you, what? <laughs> that's fucked up, man. Anyway, go ahead. Honorable mentions. Okay. All right. Uh, real quick, cool. I'm going to run down this list. You stop me or you uh, and, and tell me if anything you want to talk about, okay? But wait, we already talked about Fight Club, talked about Reservoir Dogs. Um, the Indiana Joneses is, okay, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, now, yes, some for being very good, some for being really shitty. Uh, let's see. The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly for me. Um, mm -hmm. Spaghetti Westerns. Fantastic. And, and, and yeah. Love that. Um, all, all of those Clint Eastwood movies. Yes. All the Back to the Futures is. is. Um, even the last one, even though. Yeah, yeah, they were good. No, they were good. I like yeah. those. I still watch those. I still get right. sucked into those. Right. And all the Star Wars is. 
and all the Star mm -mm. Treks. Mm -mm. No. Well, well, okay, okay. No. I'm sorry. When I when I'm oh, saying so four, that, five, I'm and saying... six. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm saying that. that. Yes. <laughs> all, all, all. Like I said, all. <laughs> right. All the Star Wars. Right. All the Star Wars. <laughs> all right, and, and when I say this, all the Star Treks is, I mean, yes, I mean, you know, for, for obvious Two, reasons, again. four, six, right? <laughs> <Pretty> much. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, you know, and I'm surprised you and I both, and I'll bet you, you had a harder time as I did, The Matrix. So good. Right. Uh, for, again, for obvious reasons, uh, we, we could have a whole show on just The Matrix and, and, and its cinematography and blah, blah, blah. And about how they fucked up the third movie and who well, the second it, it was like a fucking train yeah. going down yeah. a cliff because it was like first one, ooh, ooh so good, so yes. good. Second one, e third yeah. one, boom, yeah. right. It was almost like at least with the second one, it's like you know they could save this with the third one. You and I were they like, could right if if the, we, you and I had written the third movie out, we did. We it would have been so much better. Oh, we, ours would have been so good, so yeah. good. All right, uh, I've already gone through all the John Hughes's is. Um, I talked about Battlefield Earth as a shit. I, 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 that popped into my head and I had to change it. Now, I'd say one of a movie that can be the worst and yet be the best at the same time. Are you ready for this? Okay. The Room has to get honorable mention for just having such a recent impact. Come on. <laughs> it did. You know, that did have kind of an impact on us. For one, it was like – it was it was like – like I, it was like it was like bending over and having a horse kick me in the taint repeatedly, right? But at the same time, like it made it made the disaster artist a fucking piece of art. Yes, it did. You know, right? It really did. It made the disaster artist like a, a ma amazing. It did. It did. Oh, so yeah, that's I just had to say that that I oh, hi, the room Mike. had to get the <laughs> Right. <laughs> All right. So you know, again, there are so many movies that I have liked over the years that yes. that I could that I could talk about, and this wasn't about like movies that we liked. Okay. So like all you people mm -hmm. are in the chat room are mentioning a lot of great movies. You know what? I agree yes, with most are. of them. There's yeah. so many in here that are fantastic. You know, um, Akira. Like Jonathan mentioned, Akira. Dude, Akira. Oh, it was such a fucking great anime. Like awesome. A Akira and Ghost in the Shell. Both the animes were. Oh, brilliant. The movies, yeah. the Akira movie was, or no, we didn't have done the Akira movie. I'm sorry, the Ghost in the no. Shell movie. The Ghost in the Shell movie was good. It was just... Meh. It, yeah, they, they Americanized yeah. too much of the story. Uh, how about the Giver? That was a good one, too. Giver was good. I mean, but yeah, it, 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 the, it's not in the same part. category, though. I mean, it's it's not it's not up there with, with Akira and, Akira, and yeah, Ghost yeah. in the Shell. Yeah. Um, and and Appleseed, oh god, Appleseed, fucking, that was brilliant too. Um, just so so many movies to talk about. I mean, I could go on all go we could, we almost have gone on all night. Um, <laughs> but but those are our favorite, or not our favorite, but most no. impactful movies. Yes, on us. Um, movies that had yeah. kept us impacted. <laughs> impacted, yes, especially the room after the the taint kicking yes. I took. How many? How long did it take you to watch that? I mean, like days, oh like God. days. It, it was days. Remember that? I'm like, yeah, it was oh, days. I'm like, I can't even. I'm like five minutes in, and I can't. I had to stop it. All right, you. So now, that was enjoyable for you, though, right? Like, like sharing and knowing my agony, oh, and yes. that I was having so much trouble. You at least enjoyed that, dude. I had spent the past couple of days before you started watching it, right? And like you, I could only do that movie in like twenty minutes. Right pieces dude dude it was i i literally would put that I, I'm, I'm a little ashamed to say this but i would put that on while i was driving <laughs> and it was still i still had to turn it off just listening to it was was bad it was bad oh, hi mike right <laughs> hi mike <laughs> oh hi mike Oh God! Yeah. All right. So that's it. That that's that's our that's our take on movies. That yeah. how how they have affected us. I hope you all have enjoyed hearing more about you know how we became who we are. At least yes. a little bit more with the, with these in person shows. We get a lot of that um, uh -huh. going on lately. And I didn't even mention any of the karate movies. Like I was all into martial art movies. I mean, they didn't really change me. Um, I guess the honorable mention of that would be like because I can't pick out one. It's just like the Karate you know, Kid. 
no. The martial art movies, you know, like like Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and, you know, as I got older, Jet Li and, um, you know, fuck, Chow Young Fat with, with the movie Hard Boiled back when... Um, oh, that you you love that movie. Oh, God damn good. it. That was like... Yeah. Oh, it was like violence porn. Um, yeah, it was. You know? <laughs> it was. And then that, that director... Oh, I can't remember his name now because he, he came over here and he did Broken Arrow and he did Face Off and... He came over here and Hollywood fucked him up. Like every Hollywood movie he did was garbage, but all the fucking Chinese movies he did were yeah. amazing, beautiful, like yeah. pieces of art. And then he came over here and it got all fucked up. But yeah, I loved a lot of that shit, I, and I just wanted to, you know, I wanted to do like martial arts and shit like that because of it. But um, um, but no one in particular. Real real quick, I I was having some I was having some text with my mom. <laughs> That didn't sound right. I was I texting with means. my mom earlier today, and um, I was asking her, hey, mom, you know, like, is there a movie that defines us, you know, as far as she misunderstood me? She thought, well, a movie that, like, is like us? I'm like, no, no, no. A movie that was, like, special to us, you know, that we shared a lot. And um, she said uh, there were two movies that she made mention of. Johnny Dangerously, which was okay. We used to watch that. It was kind of funny or whatever. But – uh, the Blues Brothers is, uh, I think, I have to give honorable mention because it was a movie that my mom and I um, watched a lot um, together. Yeah, yeah. So that that didn't do a whole lot for me. I didn't expect it would. Yeah, right. I was like, oh god, fuck, so many, so many movies. Mad Max. Oh, Mad Max was so badass. RoboCop. One in the hand is worth two. Two in the. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah, we had so many memes from movies. Yeah. You and I can just, oh man, face off. Oh right. my God. Remember right. face off? I do. I do. All right, but look, hey, dude, 1009. All right. Gotta, All right. gotta, gotta go. Gotta, gotta pull the cord. It. All right, y'all. Thanks. Thanks for joining us in the chat room. I uh, loved watching all this. Fun. This fucking discussion in the chat room, badass. Thanks for everybody. We had, dude, we had like twelve people at one point watching. That's pretty. That's pretty yeah. cool. Really all good. right, you all. Thank you all for listening. Here we go. Hey, you've just enjoyed another awesome episode of Movies with the Mythwits. <laughs> We're live on Facebook Mondays at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. Please ask our guests questions or just us or just banter with the other Mythfits. If you miss our live show, you can always catch the Encore episodes on Facebook or YouTube. Find us at Mythwits.com and on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as Mythwits. If you don't have time for videos, make sure to subscribe to our podcast via your favorite podcast or do the like, follow, subscribe thing wherever it's appropriate. And make sure to share your favorite episode on social media to help spread myth with love over the entire planet. Look, everybody, YouTube, YouTunes, uh, reviews. Please, somebody, I, YouTunes, listen to YouTunes, fucking iTunes YouTube. reviews, YouTunes. It's a combination. Do both. Um, do <laughs> Pithwits is a Creative Commons product. Like it, share it in all the places. Just don't edit it. Don't sell it. And I don't. I didn't have one for this mic. I don't know. Don't uh, watch Battlefield Earth with it. No, do, not. Is, <laughs> do, do not. Do do not. I swear to God, if you watch Battlefield Earth on this show. <laughs> Mythwits is part of the TSR Podcast Network. Check out TSRPN.com for more cool shows. Make sure to check out our parent company, Aetherforge.com, for more cool stuff and join our mailing list. Game School is back in full swing, everybody. Make sure you watch those episodes. They're, they're, uh, Spence and James are killing it. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Tell your friends to tune in. And until next week, Mike. You're Mr. Vernon. We accept the fact that we had to sacrifice a whole Saturday in detention for whatever it was we did wrong. What we did was wrong. But we think you're crazy making us write an essay telling you who we think we are. You see us as you want to see us, in the simplest terms and the most convenient definitions. Most, but what we found is that each of us is a brain, an athlete, and a basket case. Oh, and a prom queen. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Ciao. Okay.